Hi, I'm going to introduce you on how to use AQHCML. What is AQHCML? It's on a script wrote by ArchiSet from the New York Times infographics team that allows you to create graphics on Illustrator and export them as an HTML file. Let's see how it works. First of all, what you have to do is download the script. For that, the easiest way is look for AQHTML on Google. Here is the website, aqhtml.org. In this website, you can find a script and the documentation on how to use it. It might be a good idea to keep an eye on the documentation before using it, especially if you want to go deeper in this amazing script. But for now, yes, let's go how to install it. And let's go to download the latest version of the script. Just save the link as I'm gonna save it in this folder that I have created for this exercise. Now that it's downloaded, I go into Finder. So what we need to do is to move this file into a specific folder inside the Adobe Illustrator folder. So let's go to Applications, Adobe Illustrator, Presets, NUS, Scripts, and let's move it inside that folder. So here it is. Which is the next step? Just open an Adobe Illustrator file. Let me get rid of this and save it. So I have created this image you have some text and you have some images. Uh, my idea is to show you how it works. What the script is gonna do is going to transform the artboard with its, its images into a GPJ or a PNG file. And the text is gonna transform it into an HTML file. Let's see how it works. So you need to go to File, scripts and you will see quite probably here a2 html why because it's the first time you're using it so you need to go to all the script go to let's go i know it's here but let's do it from the from the from scratch go to applications go to adobe illustrator presets and us scripts and a2 html now it's running. As you can see, we have now this box with text. Let's see what it is. Well, those are the settings for H to HTML. Uh, for now, just let me explain you a couple of things. You can see the image format, you can change it to GPJ, but if you do that, you need to rerun the, the script in order to make it work. You have responsiveness, now it's fixed, but if you want to make it dynamic, you could do it. I usually don't work with dynamic because I feel it's harder to control, but if you want to do it, feel free to do it. And you have the, the folder path, in which is going to put the PNGs and the HTML file and the extension of the file, the number of colors of the PNG file and the quality of the GPJ. You can put a 100 if you want or keep the 60 by default. So now let's see what we have in the folder. Well, uh, it seems like the script had created a, a new folder that is called, called a 2 html output. Let's open it. We have a PNG file. Let's open it as well. And we, fi we have the picture and the, and the map. This is like the background. And here we have the HTML file. Uh, so we have the, that very same picture and the map, and if you try to drag it, you will see there is a, a PNG. And you have the 
the text as an HTML text. As you can see, it doesn't look like the form that, that I was using in my exercise. Uh, I will explain why later. For now, let's try to see if it's responsive. It is not. So what is the best option if you want to do your graphic responsive? Let's see how to make it. So what we need to do is to create different artworks. Uh, you can create as many as you want. It depends on how many devices you want to, you want to include. Uh, you can include, I don't know, desktop, tablet, uh, what kind of tablet do you want to include? Yeah, you want to do a specific version for a mini iPad or for an iPad that is landscape or, or, a, or a tablet that is portrait. Uh, it is an iPhone 6 or an iPhone 5. It depends on what you want. I'm going to create four different artworks. One for desktop, another one for tablet, another one for a wider uh, mobile, and the last one for smaller mobile, for example, an iPhone 5. But if you want just to create three of them, feel free to do it. I know it sounds like a lot of work, but it's worth it. This first artboard is 800 pixels wide, and this is important. You have to name them. Uh, this one I named it desktop. This one, the tablet version, I named it tablet, and it's 600 pixels wide. The mobile version, the first one, is 400 pixels and the last mobile version, the second one, is 290 pixels. The script is going to use these names to name every one of the PNGs files that it's creating. So, now as you can see, I have created these different versions with different pictures. I think this is important. I know this is dummy. But as you can see, it's not exactly that I just made every element smaller. I have like reorganized everything. Even I have like cropped the image in order to put the same amount of information in a smaller like arbor. So now that I have done that, let's run the script again. Um, let's do it from the scratch. Let's go to, to file, scripts, all the scripts. Let's go to applications. Let's go to Adobe Illustrator, Presets, and US Scripts, A to HTML. And it's running. It might take a while. So let's go to Finder and I'm going to, this is the folder of where the file was saved and this is the folder that the script has created. So let's see what we have inside. So now we have a desktop PNG, mobile 1 PNG, mobile 2 PNG and a tablet PNG and an HTML that I'm, gonna, I'm going to open. Let's see what happens here. It seems like, it's, like it is really long. Oh, um, it's not what we were expecting. It has like the older versions of the file one after the other. So it's not responsive. And that's because um, we have to include some media queries to make it responsive. 